So welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Safira. I serve as a representative here at the Baha'i International Community. I want to extend a very warm welcome to all of you here with us in person today and everybody who's joining us online. Um, we're holding an event today titled Values and Innovation, Women's Engagement in Reimagining Digital Technologies. And so hopefully everyone has had a chance to take a look at this statement. So this was a, a statement that the Baha'i International Community submitted to the CSW this year on the priority theme, which is on innovation and technological change and education in the digital age for achieving gender equality and the empowerment for all women and girls. And so the aim of this event is really to create a space for us to explore ideas around the priority theme and to look at some of the concepts proposed in the statement. Many technologies, which should serve as a tool to extend human, human capability and to contribute to the construction of a prosperous and cohesive civilization, reflective of humanity's highest values, instead can tend to reinforce distorted notions about human nature, about ident identity, about process, and about purpose. And so some of the questions that we're wanting to explore today revolve around really looking at the forces that are currently operating in digital technology and how those forces either reflect or distort our identity, progress, and purpose. We also have, you know, in modern technological innovation, perspectives and contributions that women and girls can offer and ensuring that the tools of the modern world are informed by humanity's collective values and help multitudes to reach their potential. So then we also want to explore what are some of the unique and distinct qualities, perspectives and contributions that women and girls can make to technological innovation. We also recognize that extending women's participation will ultimately need to be based on a recognition that this multiplicity of perspectives is a prerequisite for building a future that is responsive to the whole range of human experience. So then how can these fuller conceptions of human nature encompassing these qualities of trustworthiness, of commitment to truth, to a sense of responsibility to building building blocks of a stable world order, increasingly find their expression in digital technologies. So these are some of the ideas that we're wanting to explore a little bit more in depth today. So we have a few of our member states who have very kindly joined us. Um, we have the ambassador from um, Belize, Ambassador Carlos Fuller. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm the permanent representative of Belize to the United Nations. We have Mrs. Katia Ziana Nolaska, director of the Center of the Development of Digital Competencies and the Chancellery of the Prime Minister of the Republic of Poland. Thank you so much for being here. And we have Mr. Alan George, Minister Counselor from the Permanent Mission of Sierra Leone to the United Nations. So we'll first hear from our member states in that order. And then all of us have been invited as part of a roundtable discussion to kind of come prepared with you know, a one minute reflection or a one minute intervention um, because we want to have an engaged and a vibrant conversation, but also for that conversation to be propelled by some pre-thinking and some pre-thought. So as you feel moved when you're ready, I'll invite you to kind of raise your hand or indicate that you are willing to speak and we'll invite you to share. We will kind of break off with those who are in the room and those who are joining us virtually. We want to be able to hear from everybody. So you will break off into your um, virtual rooms as well so that there can be a, an interactive and an engaging conversation around some of these themes online as well. So with that, I'll invite Ambassador Fuller to start us off and share a few, a few remarks. Floor is yours, Ambassador. Thank you very much, Madam Moderator. I wish to thank you and the organizers for the invitation to participate in this event on the occasion of the 67th session of the Commission on the Status of Women. I read with interest your statement and fully endorse its contents. Part of the statement says, and I quote, and as you just quoted, Many technologies which should serve as tools to extend human capability and contribute to the construction of a prosperous and cohesive civilization, reflective of humanity's highest values, instead reinforce distorted notions about human nature and identity, progress and purpose. I believe that distorted notions are reinforced primarily because humanity's highest values stated as honesty, equality, justice, dignity, and commitment to truth are not shared values. 
technology is being developed and shaped to reflect the values of developers which advocate and promote consumerism, the accumulation of wealth, winning at any cost, and the survival of the fittest. If developers have not been subjected to systemic inequality and injustice, they would not feel compelled or have the urge to ensure that the new tools they are developing address these systemic injustices and the needs of the poorest and most vulnerable groups. Women accounted for 47.7% of the global workforce in 2022, yet they held only 26.7% of positions in technology. In 2001, in the United States, of the 329,559 software engineers, only 25.1% were women. To address this gap, we must encourage young women to undertake education in science, technology, and innovation. In Belize, we have just established new STEAM educational facilities, which are now being well subscribed. While women account for approximately 80% of the student body in our tertiary level institutions, they are shying away from the field of technology. Therefore, we need to ensure that at least 50% of the students in our new STEAM facilities are female. Companies must be encouraged to recruit female engineers and software developers and make the working conditions attractive so that the new female recruits remain in the workforce and that there are paths for their advancement. Now, more than ever, we need the collective vision of humanity to achieve the sustainable development goals. While we were already behind in 2019, when the COVID-19 pandemic hit us, the conflict in Eastern Europe then pushed us further behind. We now have only seven years to make up a slow start and overcome these twin hurdles uh, to address world hunger and environmental degradation. This will require the design, development, and dissemination of new technologies that address food production, energy use, transportation, and housing, while caring for our environment and land and marine-based ecosystems. This will require the contributions of the untapped and underutilized innovative potential of 50% of humanity, the female mind. Thank you very much. very much, Ambassador, also for highlighting the importance of education, working conditions for women, and also the tie to the SDGs. All right, we'll now turn to Ms. Nosowska from Poland. Over to you. Uh, hello, and thank you for your invitation. Uh, I would like to close uh, or present some data about women uh, in technologies <coughs> in Poland. Of course, I can agree on most thesis presented by Ambassador. Um, but the basis of the development of digital economy is not only investment uh, in new technologies, but above all, the development of human capital. Uh, is, uh, in all other uh, as in other countries, there is also so shortage of specialists in Poland. Uh, currently, we have about uh, 500,000 uh, uh, of them, but they constitute only 3.5% of the employed in Polish economy, where the European Union average is 4.5. Uh, the Polish Economic Institute estimates that there are currently a shortage of about 150,000 spe uh, specialists on the Polish labor market. Being aware of the challenges we faced in the <clears throat> realities of the Ford Industrial Revolution, we have prepared a government program for the development of digital competencies. Uh, one of the main goals is to reach the level of 6% of ICT specialists among people working in Poland by 2013. 29% uh, of them are women. In uh, 2021, almost 100,000 women ICT specialists work in Poland, which account for, uh, accounted for only 60% of this professional group. Currently, the EU average is 19%. Uh, uh, there is a noticeable increase in number of women working in ICT industry, but we need to speed up this process. Since 2015, the number of women ICT specialists in uh, Poland has increased by more than 50%. At the same time, the increase in number of men working in ICT was relatively less, uh, it was uh, 35. 
asset. As part of digital competences uh, development program, we have planned a number of activities that will change the image of ICT uh, professions, as well as mathematics and science, as a stereotypical male professions. We will invest in training for women who want to start a professional career in the field of ICT, also Ukrainian uh, uh, citizens too, because we, as you know, we've got a lot of women uh, on our uh, uh, labor market. In March, it's planned to announce big project uh, competition finance from the budget of Minister of Digitization for training activities for women, future ICT specialists, and number of other project, uh, projects addressed to men. I would like to point out uh, the success as already achieved. The OECD Going Digital Toolkit noted um, a positive change in the young female programmers indicator. In, 2000, uh, in 2021, in Poland, the share of girls and women in 16-24 age group who can program is uh, 44%, where the average of 32 OECD countries is 30%. We are um, on the third position. Uh, we are well, uh, aware that we face new challenges concern, for example, uh, AI development uh, and uh, a project that will uh, strengthen the role of women in the digital economy, which we will implement in the spirit of uh, supporting the idea of lifelong learning. Thank you. Thank you. Love this focus on lifelong learning, I think, and capital and digital competencies. And incredible to see that the number of women in ICT have increased by 50% since 2015. That's an incredible statistic. Thank you so much. So now we'll turn to Sierra Leone. Mr. George, over to you. Thank you. And thank you to Dubai International Community for inviting me, Sierra Leone, to give our perspectives on the digital digitalization and then uh, women's empowerment. Um, I would like to apologize to Ambassador. He would have loved to be here, but definitely is in uh, Qatar now with the LDC conference. So we definitely endorse your statement of values in innovation, especially talking about um, uh, technology can be a potent instrument of amplifying human capacity. And uh, we all know that gender equality and women's empowerment is very critical to achievement of the sustainable development goals. And that achieving gender equality and women's empowerment require transformation shifts, integrated approaches, and new solutions. So if we aspire to achieve a planet 50-50 by 2030, it will only be realized if we organize, among other things, that ownership and use of digital technologies have substantial potential for the economic empowerment of women and increasing gender equality. The relationship between gender and technology is viewed as mutually constitutive. Access to the internet and ownership and access to digital services can also offer additional employment opportunities income and knowledge, and play a variety of roles in supporting the development of women's capacities and resources. Women in developing countries are 25% less likely to be online than men. 200 million fewer women have access to mobile phones, and a woman is 20% less likely than a man to own a bank account. Women also remain underrepresented in science, technology, engineering, agriculture, and mathematic fields in every region of the world. And the use of education and innovation to advance gender equality and empowerment of women and girls has been taken up by the government of Sierra Leone, and the following measures have been put in place. Women and girls pursuing STEAM are given scholarships at university level. The introduction of a free quality education program backed by a radical inclusion policy has facilitated an unprecedented increase in the retention of girls from various backgrounds in school enrollment. Therefore, information and communication technologies can empower people to communicate and network at a global scale. 
It has enhanced women to bring a fresh approach and offer unique perspectives to meet challenges, solve problems, and design new products. ICTs can also bring more women into the tech field. And since technology often offers high salary opportunity, their presence in the industry can help reduce the overall gender pay gap. So in conclusion, we can see technological change will help women and girls organize themselves better, use strategies to build knowledge and solidarity networks to break the limitations of borders beyond the imaginable. And thus, there is a lack of in-depth understanding of the use of ICTs for women's empowerment. As member states, we will have to do more to provide unprecedented opportunities for innovation and technological change through education so that we will be able to empower women to break trends and to ensure that those who are most likely to be left behind would be rich. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you so much for making those ties to integrated approaches and new solutions and highlighting the work that your government is doing. Some of those um, interventions sound very promising. So thank you. So I'd like to turn now and, and open up the floor to those who may like to react or share a one minute thought that they may have pre-prepared. Um, but I'd like to invite perhaps our youngest member in the room to kind of get the ball rolling as we move into this roundtable discussion portion. Um, for those who are joining us online, now is the time you'll be moving um, into a group with, a, with another facilitator who will be able to um, facilitate your interventions virtually. So we'll just give a minute for that transition to happen and then we will, we will turn to our um, representative from the Working Group on Girls. For those in the room, um, when you feel moved to speak or when you're ready, just raise your hand or indicate to me that you're ready and I'll do my best to make sure I'm looking at those behind me so that we also give everybody a chance to contribute. Leave it. 